Hello, I'm Mary Stahl. I'm one of the clinical practice specialists at AACN. And I'm very happy today to be here with Jennifer Detchmendi. Jennifer is an assistant professor in the physiologic and technologic nursing department at Augusta University of College of Nursing in Augusta, Georgia. She has almost 20 years of nursing experience in surgical and trauma ICU care, and over 10 years experience as a critical care clinical nurse specialist. Her research interests include vulnerable populations, specifically sexual and gender minorities and how the collection of sexual orientation and gender identity data can be used to improve outcomes in the acute care setting. Jennifer is a past president of the CSRA chapter of AACN and is a current board member. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. So um, what would you say is the most common question you get from nurses regarding care of the LGBTQ patients and families? So it's really more of a statement rather than a question. And what I still get from a lot of nurses is, you know, I really strive to treat all my patients the same. So I don't need any additional training in LGBTQ health issues. And what we're really saying when we, when we pride ourselves on treating all patients the same is what we're saying is we treat all patients as heterosexual and cisgender. So we continue to exacerbate these health disparities that occur because we are continuing this invisibility. But when we take a second to look at the differences and how those differences affect outcomes and, and well, affect health outcomes for this population, we realize that um, we're able to provide more patient-centered care and improve outcomes when we do have this knowledge, which is why I feel like it's really important to um, have this information that's in the presentation. That's wonderful. I'm really impressed with the work you've done educating our community so far. From the work you've done teaching nurses about this topic, what would you say is the greatest learning need to help them feel confident in caring for these patients? So most of the nurses that I work with really struggle with what language to use when they are taking care of an LGBTQ identified patient or family, or they struggle with language if they've misgendered or misidentified someone. So in addition to the general LGBTQ competency training, I think an even greater need is for us to address how to incorporate the collection of sexual orientation and gender identity data into our normal demographic data and assessment processes. And, and then how we mirror that language in order to put it all together into a comfortable way for ourselves and the patients. And that also is in the presentation. For the years you've worked extensively in this area, what progress do you think we've made in healthcare that's improved the care that we're providing to patients and families? Well, you know, historically, the primary care sector has really been the one that has led the movement to address and end disparities in the LGBTQ population. But so I'm extremely happy that the acute and critical care community is now recognizing that sexual orientation and gender identity can and does affect health outcomes in our settings. Um, and while we do have a very long way to go, I feel like our greatest progress is really that recognition that, um, that and that willingness to be able to examine our care models and our processes when it comes to sexual and gender minorities and really making education a priority for all of our health care workers. Thanks. If you could tell nurses, remember these three key things in your practice regarding LGBTQ patients and families, what would those three key things be? I would say to, you know, really strive to ask open-ended questions when you're dealing with your patients and then let the, follow the patient's lead when it comes to labels and identifiers and language. And, you know, again, really strive to use non-gendered and inclusive language because that respects all of your patients' identities and relationships, even outside of the LGBTQ community. And then, you know, I think finally, just be open-minded and curious and understand that there's probably more than likely going to be terminology and concepts that you may not understand or be familiar with when you're dealing with LGBTQ patients and families and just know that it's okay to ask. It's okay to have them educate you too. Um, you know, for the most part, patients and families are not going to be upset. And this is actually showing that you have a willingness um, to understand their issues so that you can really provide the best care possible. 
I totally understand that. Meeting people where they are makes a world of difference in their willingness to work with you and really brings the barriers down. Well, I've found this topic area fascinating. So in addition to your NTI session, which we're making available to people, uh, are there any additional learning resources you'd recommend for people who are interested in learning more? Absolutely. There are so many great free resources online, but I definitely recommend the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association. Uh, the National LGBT Health Education Center, the Fenway Institute, the CDC, and then the Healthcare Equality Index are all just amazing free resources that you can use for yourself and your institutions. Oh, thank you for those. Those will be very helpful. Is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience today? Um, first, I'd like to say, you know, just thank you to all the nurses for the exceptional care that you give to our patients and families each and every day. And I really hope that you take the time not only to view this presentation, but actually take it back to your units and your workplaces and use it to either start a conversation or continue a conversation about improving the care that you provide to your LGBTQ patients and families. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that.